please check this video out. It's kind of sweet overall, but a pretty poor execution in my opinion reminds me of when you'd ask your crush if they liked you by passing them a piece of paper with two choices, do you like me, yes or no? Just not really all that charming, captivating, or appealing really. This video just really reminded me of how overall confused people are about how to interact with the opposite sex if you want their non-platonic attention. So that inspired me to make this video. This topic overall though is pretty contentious to ask a man out or it's not asking men out, is it okay for a woman to make the first move? Will it make her look desperate? Will asking a guy out shift you into your masculine energy and shift him into his feminine energy and therefore set up your dynamic for disaster? There's a saying that goes, the flower does not come to the bee, the bee comes to the flower. This essentially means to allow the man you're interested in to pursue you. Pursuing is a form of masculinity as it is very action oriented. As the saying goes, masculinity is about doing and femininity is about being and men often only really appreciate what they have to work for. They like a bit of a challenge. They want to know that you're not easy. But this does not mean that as a feminine woman that you're powerless in the male and female dance. Our culture pedestalizes, is that a word? vulgar, tasteless, masculine women, and it's truly never been easier to stand out as a graceful, elegant, feminine woman. And it's more than okay to pray and be proactive in finding a godly man. Prince Charming probably is not going to just climb up to the window of your home and there's nothing wrong with putting effort into finding your future husband. That being said, the male and female dance within humanity is a bit more complicated than what we see out in the animal kingdom. There is truly a subtle dance when it comes to attraction, love, and romance, one that has been almost entirely lost in the modern age. It used to be much less common for women to be the ones taking the initiative in dating. When a man recognizes a desirable woman, he may be a little indecisive initially, but he should soon acknowledge what's in front of him and actively make it abundantly clear that he wants her. Traditionally, women do not do the pursuing and that is something I think generally we should still uphold. Oftentimes, traditional things are upheld not because we're not progressing forward, but because of their everlasting effectiveness and beauty. The thing is, by doing all of the work, you're not only robbing him of the opportunities to express his masculinity, you're demonstrating that you're essentially not that interested in masculinity in a man. You're essentially demonstrating that you're okay with him being effeminate. Rather, in the male and female dance, the onus is on you to express your femininity, to ravish him with your beauty, purity, holiness and inspire and encourage him to pursue you. The onus is on him to take the risks to pursue you and persuade you and win you over. By inspiring him to be in his masculinity, he will respect you and he'll become a lot more courageous and confident. When you behave in a tawdry, easy kind of way, men will treat you accordingly. That will attract only low quality, selfish men who only want to use and discard you. Taking things slow and allowing the men you want to pursue you will clear out the weeds, so to speak, leaving you only with truly masculine men who don't only want instant gratification, who don't mind putting in the work, who don't mind waiting, and who will respect you and give you the kind of, uh, the kind of attention and love you truly want. Easy women who don't ask for much will attract men who don't give much. This of course does not mean that you should be high maintenance and also shouldn't seem disinterested or frigid. It means that you should simply make room for him to take the initiative. Both of you taking the lead means there won't be any dance. Now, I'm personally of the general opinion that if a guy does not seem interested in you, he's most likely not interested in you, but I feel like that rule applies more when you and him have already established some sort of rapport or connection, when you and him have already know each other, are familiar, have already been out together romantically, if he then does not make an effort to see you or communicate with you, then he 
most likely is just not that interested for, what, for whatever reason. But if you and him have not been out, if nothing has been established, and you're both still either strangers or acquaintances, then he still may not ask you out or give you attention, even if he finds you attractive and enticing. Sometimes a guy may think you're completely out of his league and thinks it's hopeless. Maybe he thinks you're so beautiful that you must already be in a relationship. Maybe maybe he doesn't want to creep you out. Maybe he's a guy at the gym and he's so focused on his gains that he hardly notices anyone else. Maybe he's a coworker and doesn't want to risk being accused of sexual harassment in case he expresses interest. In any case, sometimes it just takes some encouragement encouragement to get the guy you have your eye on to make a move. But before I get more into the solid tips about how to get a guy's attention, here are some mistakes to avoid. Number one, don't use inauthentic gestures and don't create fake entrapping scenarios. Secondly, don't dumb yourself down. Men do enjoy being the hero, but please don't intentionally dumb yourself down to attempt to attract a man. Thirdly, don't sexualize yourself to get his attention. Fourthly, don't play toxic games as in don't behave interested and then disinterested to make yourself seem mysterious or, or something like that. If you want healthy ways to have an aura of mystery, then please watch this video about feminine mystique. And lastly, don't try to conform yourself into the exact type of woman you believe he's most attractive to. If you think he's into super girly girls, don't make yourself into a super girly girl in order to get his attention. With all that being said, here are 10 feminine ways to get a man's attention. Firstly, do not overthink it. Men, when it comes to romance, are a bit more simple. And I don't say that disparagingly. Men simply don't yearn to be ravished, romanced, and swept off their feet like women. And I'm not disparaging that either. I love to be ravished. In fact, my dear lady, your desire to be ravished is from God. But men and women simply relate to romance differently, of course. It does not take quite as much to impress men, mostly because they're supposed to be the ones pursuing us over. Overall. They're even the ones who, of course, propose traditionally. So when trying to get a man's attention, please don't think you have to do something awe-inspiring or jaw-dropping. Keep it simple. Secondly, drop the handkerchief. Dropping the handkerchief or dropping the hanky is essentially an old-fashioned flirting technique where a woman would drop her handkerchief near a man she's interested in, giving him an opportunity to pick it up and initiate a conversation or interaction. In the Victorian times, it was socially unacceptable for a woman to start a conversation with a man unless she was formally introduced to him first or he spoke with her first. Women became frustrated with the social norms Norm and knew that something must be done. But with such a fragile social system in place, women did not want to risk the stigma attached to making the initial introduction to a potential suitor. So these ladies decided to take matters into their own hands. When they saw an eligible bachelor, they would drop their handkerchief. And as a gentleman, the man of course stopped in his tracks, bent down and picked up the handkerchief. And just like that, the ice was broken, the intro was made, and women were then free to dazzle the guy with her charm. But in order to get to that place, the lady had to discreetly get the man's attention. Now, if you're going to do this instead of literally asking the man out in case you're completely averse to that, it comes with more of a risk that nothing is going to happen because you're putting the onus to initiate an actual date completely on him. And personally, I did take that risk while dating. I only asked a guy out once in the seven years I spent dating before I got married so 99% of the time I waited for the guy to ask me out first and if he didn't take the initiative nothing happened and I was okay with that I knew it would work out with the guy eventually and there are authentic graceful ways to do this and inauthentic tawdry ways to do this like it'd be inauthentic and tawdry to drop something just so you can put your fanny in the air to pick it up in an effort to draw a man's eye we're going to of course focus on some authentic classy ways to do this firstly you could hand your coat to a man and ask him to hold it for a moment while you use the ladies room extra points if the jacket is cute and smells nice you can then come back and say something like thank you very much i hope that wasn't a bother and perhaps ask him why they're in whatever place you're in to initiate a conversation secondly you could ask him to take a picture of you if you're somewhere picturesque ask the man to take your picture i'd highly suggest a wholesome pose not like a thirsty pose just express your beautiful vibrant smile you could also compliment and run which means go up to them give them a genuine compliment like you like their style, you like their hair, they have great eyes and smiling and then walking away but still keeping yourself in view. This puts the ball back in their court, allowing them to approach you if they're enticed by you. 
and just in general ask for help if you need it if you're at the gym ask for a spot ask if they can critique your form but don't do it in a sexual way that where you're like squatting or something like that ask them to help you with your groceries ask them to help put something together for you just an authentic scenario in which you need help asking for it if you want authentic gestures then be authentic yourself what to do if you make eye contact with him if you do make eye contact with the man you have your eye on there are a few things you can do to signal your interest of course firstly smile genuinely whether you use your teeth or not smile very warmly secondly instead of winking blink your eyes slowly trust me thirdly if you want to break eye contact do it bashfully like shyly as if you're a bit nervous if you don't want to break eye contact tilt your head ever so slightly whether or not you want to break eye contact really depends more on your personality which you don't want to hide of course lastly do an ever so slightly quick double take this expresses interest so effectively yet subtly number four flirting. Someone who openly expresses their desire to mingle through flirting techniques are actually much more likely to get a date than above average attractive people. So relying simply on your looks is not necessarily the best approach if you really want to get on a date. But I think people usually overthink flirting. To me, feminine flirting is essentially an escalation of subtle, suggestive behaviors draped in plausible deniability. Flirting femininely involves expressing your natural charm and attraction in a way that it's graceful, subtly confident, and warm. So based Basically, do something that practically feels a little bit extra when interacting with someone. Don't keep your interaction with them basic and minimal. Before I got married, I'd keep a few points in mind if I wanted my flirting to be subtle yet effective. I'd make sure to of course smile warmly, but also make subtle, sultry eye contact. I tilt my head slightly and place my hand gently on my cheek. I tried to make sure I didn't seem bored or tired or disinterested. I would lightly play with my hair or with my necklace. I'd laugh, but sort of in like, in like a bashful kind of way. I would deliberately put away any devices so that they know I wanted to give them my full attention. I would try to respond thoughtfully while listening to them and be careful to not interrupt them. I would direct myself and cross my legs toward them and make sure to not have closed off body language like crossing my arms. You know, that's basically the whole point of flirting. Subtle, extra action drapes in a kind of plausible deniability so that if he does not engage or seems disinterested, you can disengage at any time. That way you can also keep the ball in his court. Number five, demonstrate grace. In a world that often clamors for attention, grace and poise offers a tranquil respite and together weaves a tapestry of enchantment. Feminine grace is a captivating and enchanting quality that emanates from the essence of a woman. It is a delicate and elegant expression of beauty, strength, and an innate sense of poise. Feminine grace embodies a refined presence characterized by gentle movements, refined gestures, and an effortless charm that captivates and inspires. It is a dance of fluidity and elegance, a symphony of subtle expressions and refined manners that reflect a woman's inner grace. Grace and poise go hand in hand, creating a captivating aura of sophistication and inner grace that transcends superficial qualities and leaves a lasting impression on those who encounter them. So here are some easy ways to demonstrate grace and poise. Firstly, of course, don't look slovenly. Always try to dress for the occasion. Bring a lint roller with you, iron or steam your clothes, groom your nails, brush your hair, just look like you care about presenting yourself. Secondly, try to walk and move with purpose and intent. Keep your head up, your eyes forward, and walk at a graceful stride. People who are graceful don't hunch over or shuffle their feet. They know where they're going. If you look at the floor, you'll look lost or like you're not confident. Thirdly, maintain a calm, considerate disposition. Graceful people are not often seen ranting, gossiping, raving, or hurling insults at other people. They are not easily swayed, annoyed, or overwhelmed. They don't brag, and they tend to stay calm and be a bastion of resilience when others need them. Fourthly, cultivate a mindset of abundance instead of scarcity. This will encourage you to take your time with any set of tasks as graceful people don't seem rushed or hurried. Remind yourself that you have the time God will provide the means, etc, etc. Remind yourself that life is abundant because God is abundant. Number six, open, inviting body language. I was once writing an essay in a library at my college and I was sort of talking to myself while typing. You know when you do that, when you sit at your laptop and speak the words you're typing and see how everything, whoa, how everything sounds and how it flows, like I'm doing right now, like I'm, I, ha I have this expressive kind of body language. While I was doing that in the library and a young man came up to me and said I was pretty and asked if I could study side by side with him. And I believe I got his attention because I was making these kinds of gestures at my desk. Interestingly, women usually think men with more closed off body language are more attractive than men who use a lot of 
enthusiastic open body language. It's the opposite for men. Men usually find very enthusiastic, expressive, open body language more attractive than more reserved body language. So you could try this as well to get a man's attention. You could do what I did unknowingly. You could try and talk and make gestures while you're typing something. You could do it while talking to someone else. You could do it while on the phone. Just know that you can capture more attention from men by having open, expressive, fluid body language instead of more reserved body language. Number seven, be approachable. If you want to actually captivate a man's attention, you need to be approachable. You need to have a welcoming demeanor about you that creates an atmosphere of warmth, openness, and invitational. You just need to be inviting. <laughs> Firstly, don't seem utterly entranced with anything. Otherwise, anyone will be worried about bothering you. So monitor your environment, look around, people watch, take breaks, and don't have your earphones in. Secondly, make sure your physical environment is inviting. Keep it clean and organized. Thirdly, I suggest to not wear black if your goal is to have a welcoming demeanor. People are more likely to find people who wear black less approachable, friendly, trustworthy, welcoming, etc. And I say this as a seasonal winter, black looks best on me in comparison to most other colors. But if I really want to make a good impression, I won't wear it like I'm wearing white today. Fourthly, have a poised open posture. Don't slouch, don't have your hand over your face like this. And lastly, monitor your RBF if you have one. You know, an RBF like a resting B face, you know. <laughs> Anyone would most likely not want to risk bothering you if you look just utterly done with the day and everyone else. <laughs> Number eight, use your voice. If there's a man in your vicinity and you want to get his attention, make a call to someone with your phone. I'd highly suggest not making it seem meaningless or forced. Try to make it an authentic call like you're calling your friend to catch up or ask them a question or see if they want to meet up. And then use this call to your advantage. Firstly, talking will make your presence more known to the guy. He's more likely to take notice of you and look over to you, which you could use to then make eye contact with him and flirtatiously smile at him. Secondly, you could demonstrate how friendly or playful you are with the authentic phone call. And thirdly, you could describe what you're currently doing in a way that makes you seem not so busy so that the guy knows that you're approachable. Again, I really wouldn't recommend faking a call. Make it a genuine call so that you're not just using your friend or loved one as a pawn in your flirting. I'm really hitting that point home because I'm all for authentic gestures and actions. If you're actually interacting with a man and want to express some interest, then tastefully breaking the touch barrier will effectively establish more of a connection. I broke the touch barrier once by saying that there was a piece of big fuzz on the guy's shoulder and offering to get it. It was effective at demonstrating my interest and seeing if he was all right with making some contact. I would also go for the high five if I wanted to break the touch barrier. I'd wait for an appropriate moment and then offer it. This is subtle, but it counts and is very socially acceptable. Some other ways to tastefully break the touch barrier would be to gently pat his hand and squeeze him on the shoulder, but you need to always take cues from the other person. Be subtle and pay attention to how the other person responds to any contact. If they seem receptive and reciprocate the contact, it can indicate a positive connection. However, if they pull away or show signs of discomfort, it's essential to respect their boundaries and adjust your behavior accordingly. Now that I've gone over the more indirect ways of expressing interest, here's how I would personally ask a guy out if I were still single and find myself driven to that choice. A lot of women feign at the idea of asking a man out, but I once did it and I don't think it automatically sets up the relationship for failure. Again, there are legitimate reasons why a guy may not ask you out. Maybe he thinks he's out of your league. Maybe he doesn't want to seem desperate or creepy. Maybe he's really shy. Maybe he thinks you're so beautiful that you must already be in a relationship. As long as you do it tastefully, subtly, gently, you look put together and you're genuinely not desperate, I don't think it's inappropriate. So feminine women generally prefer a more direct approach when being asked out, I believe. Take Ryan Gosling in Crazy Stupid Love, for example. But I think a more masculine man would be more receptive to a bit more of a gentle, subtle approach. So here's an example of what I would do. Hi, I don't want to bother you at all and I don't want to put you on the spot, but you seem like someone I would really like to get to know. So I was wondering if you'd like to perhaps study together sometime. 
It does not have to seem perfect. I know some people will probably judge that example, but that's probably exactly what I would personally do. I wouldn't hide the fact that I'm shy, that I'm nervous because that communicates to him that I don't ask men out that often and it communicates the effect that he has on me, that he makes me nervous, which communicates how attracted I am to him. The thing is, if you really like the guy and he's shy or something and, and nothing else has really worked, there's a good chance he will respond positively to you, gently asking him out if you have a positive demeanor and are well put together. Well, that is all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I have the full version of this video on my Patreon, by the way. So if you're interested in that, you can go to my Patreon through the link in my description box. Please like the video and subscribe for more if you enjoyed it and comment your thoughts down below, perhaps some things you've done to get a man's attention. Thank you so much for clicking on my video out of all the videos out there and watching all the way to the end. You are, that is really, really cool. <laughs> Please enjoy my carefully curated outro music. <laughs>